your thoughts encourage us. Mm -hmm. And um, so here's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Yeah. We're going to be talking about the apostate church. Mm. Now, that is a condition that much of the church will be in in the last days. Mm. Now, I personally believe that there are two predominant churches in the end times. I believe that there is the apostate church, and then there's that remnant. There's that church that will be on fire. She's like a bride preparing herself, Come on, you know, getting rid, of, getting rid of the spot, wrinkles, and blemishes, and she's looking forward to her... Uh, to Jesus coming, yep. like the, the parable of the ten virgins, you have five wise and five foolish, and I believe that the five wise are a picture of that remnant mm. that are have that level of expectation that the Lord could come at any moment, and they're preparing themselves, getting ready, and that's where we should be right now, yeah. getting ready, and that's what tonight is all about. It's helping to keep Amen. us alert. It's End time prophecy is not given to us to scare us. It is, is actually given to us... Um, to give us peace, Ooh, and also good. it's given to us like signs. Think about this. Yep. When you're traveling somewhere, uh, I know there are moments where, uh, you know, wherever I'm going, uh, you, driving a great distance, you know, signs give you an indication yep. that you're on the right track. Yeah. And also they alert you to how much further you have to go. Mm -hmm. So this message tonight, what we want to talk about tonight, this subject rather, yeah. It is a sign that God said would be one of the signs that indicate we are in mm. the end times yep. and that we are that generation that will see the return of the Lord or the Lord come and take the church out. Mm. And I really believe with all my heart yep. that everything that needs to happen for the rapture to happen, the mm -hmm. catching, catching away, the, the church being taken out, and we are pre-tribulation in, in our theology, meaning we don't believe that Christians have to go through seven years of tribulation. I realize that there, there are a significant number yeah. of believers that believe that, uh, but, but I don't believe that. Not. And the reason being is because of studying God's word. And it's just given me this confidence and assurance that, that it's not been appointed unto us to go through mm -hmm. the great wrath and the tribulation, that God's not going to send his judgment on his church or mm -hmm. on his bride that is truly living for him. He's going to take them out and then release judgment on the earth. And so we're in the last days. Now, when scripture was yeah. written thousands of years ago, mm -hmm. they were looking into the future as the spirit of God came upon them. Mm -hmm. And they could see things like a little dot way off in the horizon or like a little cloud way off in the horizon. Yep. But we're not, we're not living in a time where it's way out in the future. Hmm. We're actually the generation that is living mm -hmm. what they saw way off into the future. Yeah. So they saw it like a spot or a blemish or a cloud. Hmm. We're in the cloud. We're in the middle of what they were describing. Now, in, in Jude, there's only one chapter in the book of Jude. Mm -hmm. It's the book right before Revelation. It starts out in Jude chapter 1. I want to break some of this down for you. In Jude chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. And then we'll look at some other verses in here as well. But he starts out in verse 5 by saying, but I want to remind you. So that means they've been taught these things. Okay. He's not teaching them anything new. He's stirring up their, their memory. I want to bring back to your remembrance. In other words, they already knew it. They already knew it. Okay. They had been taught it. Mm -hmm. Maybe they forgot it. Yep. He says, but I want to remind you, yeah. though you once knew this, mm -hmm. that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe mm. and the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode. He has reserved an everlasting change under darkness for the judgment of the great day mm. as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these having given themselves over to sexual immorality mm. and going after strange flesh are set forth as an example 
That's why this whole book is here, right here. Yeah. It's an example. He said they have been set forth as an example, suffering Mm -hmm. the vengeance of eternal fire. Now, this is what he's saying. What has happened here is an example Mm -hmm. of what's going to happen in the future. Got it. And so the warning in this whole book is that people who have fallen into this apostate condition, who have abandoned the truth, they may still acknowledge God, mm. but they've abandoned the Jeez. fundamentals, wow. the accuracy of it. Mm. So they ignore the things the Bible says. They ignore the judgments. It's, it's okay. a warning that these things happened as an example to warn you not to do them, mm. but you're ignoring those warnings okay. and you're doing it anyway. Wow, that's heavy. And he described unbelieving Israel. Mm -hmm. Think about this. God delivered Israel out of Egypt. Now, that literally happened. Literally, the children of Israel Mm -hmm. had been slaves. They were in bondage for 400 years. God supernaturally delivered them, raised up Moses, uh, gave him instructions, take the blood of a lamb, a spotless lamb, Mm -hmm. apply it to the doorpost a little. You and your family would eat the whole lamb, go into the house. And when the death angel passed by, there were were also 10 plagues that that God released on Mm -hmm. Egypt to deliver them out. So when Pharaoh let them go, right? They got let go. Well, when they're in, and God did all kinds of miracles. He brought them out by the plagues. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. There was a supernatural transfer of Pharaoh and everybody in Egypt. They turned over all their wealth of silver and the gold was instantaneously given yeah, to them. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so now they're walking out of bondage. They come to the Red Sea, all the enemies of their, you know, Pharaoh's army, his most elite soldiers mm-hmm. are coming to try to recapture them. God does a supernatural miracle. He tells Moses, take his rod, hold it out over the over the sea. Mm. The waters begin to part. A cloud comes down yeah. so, that, so that Pharaoh's army couldn't see to be able to capture them. Wow. God parts the water, dries up the ground instantaneously. They cross the Red Sea yep. on dry ground. They get to the other side. Pharaoh's army comes down into the Red Sea mm-hmm. to try to pursue them. God causes the waters to collapse on them, yep. destroying all their enemies of the past. Yeah. They experience this, right? They go a few days into the wilderness. They didn't have any water. They come to the bitter waters of Mara. God does come a on. supernatural miracle. Yep. He turns the bitter waters into sweet water. And so God does miracle after miracle after miracle. Yep. He provides for them supernaturally. Every single day, there's manna that falls from heaven. Mm. Every morning, they'd wake up, open up their tent. There's manna right there. They were only allowed to get enough manna for the day because God was teaching them how to trust him every single day of their journey. Mm. At least he was attempting to. Come on, Pastor. But then he was he was desiring to take them into the promised land. Yep. He wanted to take them into Canaan. But everyone that was 20 and older that had come out of Egypt mm. never got to set foot in Canaan. Mm. And the reason they didn't get to set foot in Canaan and they died in the wilderness was because of their mentality. They're murmuring. They're complaining. Complaining. They're returning to idolatries. When Moses went up on the mountain to be with God, they, you know, they created a golden calf and began to worship Mm. it as if it was God. They were constantly backsliding and turning away from God. Complaining, bickering. Yeah. You know, I heard this one saying one time, Pastor, I heard a saying that if you want to praise the enemy, complain. (laughs) <laughs> what praise you know? is to God yes complaining is to the devil exactly that is so good what you yeah. just said that's the thought you know? that came to me when yeah. you said that so what God is actually saying in Jude to us yeah through Jude to mm-hmm. us is it pay attention that we don't make these same mistakes because people that will fall into this apostate condition yeah. will do the same things they did in the last days mm-hmm. And it will become predominant and it will be prevalent among people that call themselves Christians yeah. in the church. So it's a warning. Mm-hmm. It's a warning. Don't become like that. Don't become like that. Yep. So another thing that he mentioned in that verse that we just read was the fallen angels. Mm. He warned about what happened to them because they left their abode. They left their rightful place. And because of their rebellion, 
they were cast out of heaven. Mm. So God created Lucifer, right? Yep. He was an archangel. He was the most beautiful, powerful angel that had ever been created. Mm -hmm. But he set out to try to replace God. He wanted to exalt himself above God. Yeah. He got lifted up in pride. In Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 14, here's what it says. It mm -hmm. said, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Mm -hmm. How art thou cut down to the ground? which did weaken the nations. And thou hast said in thy heart, mm. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Yeah. I will sit also upon, upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Mm. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yeah. Rather than wanting to submit to God, he wanted to be like God. Yeah. And so this is a warning mm -hmm. for all of us. And this is what's going to happen in the last days when we rebel against God. Come on. Second Peter 2.24 says, For if God did not spare the angels that sinned, mm -hmm. but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, He's, he's saying that if that happened to them, for those of us that do the same thing, mm -hmm. it will happen to us. Wow. He's warning us, mm -hmm. don't let this happen okay. to you. He's saying, don't ignore this judgment. Mm -hmm. What they did ended up costing them their position in heaven. Wow, that's heavy. And they were cast down, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And so there are lessons to be learned here. Stay humble. In the next part of what we read about, three things we talked about mm -hmm. it, it, the, in this portion, it talked about Israel and how all those 20 and over, because of their unbelief mm -hmm. and, their, and their, their complaining and their mindset, they wouldn't believe God. Yeah. <clears throat> it, it led to them never stepping into the promised land. Yeah. God said, I can't let you go in. And, and then secondly, he warns us about the angels. Yeah. Pay attention to what happened to them because it could happen to you mm -hmm. if you let what got into them get into you. you. Wow. And, and we talked about this recently. Lucifer, he convinced a third of the angels mm -hmm. to go with him. With his words. How did he do it? He did yeah. it with his words. Come on. Yep. He convinced them. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful about who you allow to speak into you. you. Come on, Pastor. That's good. Yeah. Because some people will, will slowly try to get you to depart from the truth of God's word. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's what this whole thing is about. When, when you read 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 3, mm -hmm. let me see, uh, or is it chapter 4? I want to find it here. Yeah, First Timothy chapter four. It says, "Now, now the Spirit expressly says in the latter times some will depart from the faith." Now, notice they depart from the faith, yeah. giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of mm. demons. They speak lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Mm. And then he goes on to describe some of the things that they do. Now, there are going to be spirits that try to influence people in the last days. Yeah. And you go into 2 Timothy chapter 3, where he describes the last days like this. Mm -hmm. He said, for men will be lovers of themselves. They'll Come be on. lovers of money. They'll be boasters. They'll be proud. Mm -hmm. They'll be blasphemers. They'll be disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, slanders without self-control. Yeah. They're brutal. They're despisers of good. They're traitors. They're headstrong. They're haughty. They're lovers of pleasure wow. rather than lovers of God. They have a form of godliness, mm -hmm. but deny its power. Wow. And from such people, he says, we're to turn away. That's heavy. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins and are led away by various lusts. Mm. They're always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. 
So he's talking about people in the church. He's not talking about people okay. outside of the church. So okay. these are doctrines of demons mm -hmm. that get in. This is what the Spirit was warning him about okay. in in First uh, Timothy chapter three, and then Second Timothy chapter three. Yeah. In the last days, this is what many people will be like mm -hmm. in the church. This is an apostate condition. So when it, it says they ignore or they reject the power of God, the power of God that that they deny mm -hmm. isn't the power of, it's not talking about the power of God to cast out devils. Okay. It's not talking about the power of God to heal the sick and do signs, none wonders, of, and miracles. Okay. It's talking about the power of God to transform and change your life mm. from being a person like he's described right here. Wow. God being able to deliver you. They deny that power because they don't want that power. Got it. They reject it. They're denying what they don't want. They, they're denying what, what they, they don't, don't want. want. Wow. Because they want to continue to live in their flesh. That's, that makes sense. And, and yeah. feel like they're right with God. That's why they're always searching for teachers wow. that will minister to them what, what they, they want, want to hear <laughs> versus feeding me what God's word really has to say. What yeah. does the Lord have to say to me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's what's going to happen in the last day's church when there's this apostate spirit that will creep in and get into people and they'll be influenced by the seducing spirits yeah. and doctrines of demons. You, you know, people are going to be taken captive by it. You know, Pastor, as you're saying that right now, how it just it just brought to mind right now how, how, how dangerous that is to want to be around people that are going to tell you what you want to hear, but don't tell you what you need to hear. And the, exactly you know? right now we're living in such a time mm -hmm. that is so hostile. The environment yeah. is so hostile yeah. that if you say certain biblical things, mm -hmm. like we're talking about like some the of truth them tonight, the truth, yeah. the yeah. truth of God's word, yeah. and you can be very compassionate, very loving. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about being religious haters. No, no, we're no, not no. talking about, you yeah. know, having signs, you know, marching around the streets and standing, yeah, no, no, no. you know, God hates fags. You know, yeah. we're not doing that, nope, right? Nope. Uh, but we do lovingly tell people the truth, truth. of God's yep. word. Yep. You you can't just be all love and no truth yep. or all truth and no love. Mm -hmm. It's truth and love Come on, that transforms and changes your life. Absolutely. And But if you tell truth in love today, you will be hated on. You Big. will be called an extremist. Yep. You will be called a liar. You'll yep. be said you're evil, you're mean, you're hateful. Now that's all these bad things. All types yep. of things Absolutely. will be said to you, even threats. People will mm -hmm. threaten you with violence yep. for standing up lovingly for God's word. And so you have to be built Come on. on a strong, solid foundation. That's yep. why the Bible describes like two people building a house yep. and one digs down deep and builds his life mm -hmm. On a solid a rock. rock, the other one just, just builds on sand. sand. Yep. And above ground, they both look the same. Yep, above ground. That's good. But soon as the storm comes, mm. one falls and great is its destruction. Come on. But the other one is able to endure the storm. That's good, Pastor. Why? Because they both heard the word, one paid attention mm. to the word, and another one didn't. And so it's very important that we dig deep. And that's what these Wednesday nights are all yeah, about. Absolutely, They're Pastor. about digging down deep mm -hmm. into the Word of God. That's good, Pastor. Now, if what we're talking about tonight mm -hmm. is ministering to you. On. Let me hear from you in the chat right now. Go and let me know that what you're hearing is helping you. This is ministering to you. You're watching this at a later time. Mm -hmm. I love it when you, when you leave your comments in the comment section because those encourage us and as well if you're if this is helping you yeah. let us know this is helping you 100%. if you need prayer we're not here to condemn you nope. that this teaching and the way we minister isn't to like shake our fist no, it's not. in your face nope it's it's to reach out with a loving hand absolutely so we're safe people to be transparent with mm -hmm. and we will pray with you we'll minister absolutely uh to you we'll we'll hold you up before the lord yes and, and so I want to encourage you, leave your comments in the comment section yeah. and let me know. And, and if you're watching this right now for the first time as well, make sure you hit the subscribe. And yep. the, if you've not yet done that, the no notification bell. Mm -hmm. There are people in your world that you really think this message will help. Absolutely. Hit the share button. That's so Send good. them the link mm -hmm. and say, you really got to listen to this. Yeah. Because it's this kind of teaching that's going to keep you grounded and solid with all of this craziness that's coming that's at good, you. Pastor. Because it saddens me. I see what is, I've seen it coming. Mm -hmm. 
And it is on us right now. Yeah. I see people that used to be so solid. Come on, Pastor. But now they have compromised and drifted away from sound biblical truths. Yep. Yep. And they're misapplying. They have actually perverted certain truths. They twisted certain truths. So they, they've abandoned the truth in its rawest form. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They Whether you want to call it sugared down yep. or, or just diluted it yep. or, or added into it something that really isn't there in the context of the, of the scripture. They've yeah. taken away from it. Yeah. If you know people that this will help send it to them, yeah. that's why we do this. Because mm-hmm. we want to help you to be able to build your life on a solid foundation. Yeah. So as the storms come, mm-hmm. because in the parable of the two builders built in their house, the storm came. Yeah, that's good, Pastor. Come on. And the storms are going to come. The winds are going to blow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But your house doesn't have to fall. You can stand strong. Come on, Pastor. With Jesus being the Lord of your life, navigating you through these storms and challenges in life. Yeah. That's good. Based upon the integrity of Scripture. Mm, That's so good. So the next thing Mm -hmm. that, so three things he talked about, right? Yeah. So he talked about Israel, what happened to them because Mm -hmm. of their unbelief. Uh, Lucifer, all the angels because of their trying to replace God Mm -hmm. and exalt himself above him. Then the third thing in the scriptures that we've read so far have to do with Sodom and Gomorrah Mm. because Sodom and Gomorrah in, in, in a similar manner as these other two, they, he said they've fallen into this apostate state and sinful lifestyle has become normalized. And here's the warning in this. He's saying that it will be normalized in the church. And there are so many people in the church today Mm -hmm. that know those verses are in the Bible that talk about honoring God with your bodies and honoring covenant and celebrating the coming together the way God has designed it. But they push that out of the way and they intentionally pervert it or do something differently. Mm. Now, listen, I want to say this. I'm not talking about people who are struggling with sin or people who are trying to get right and work on their life. And in the process, you, you've you given in to temptation and you sin. I'm not, this isn't about nope. that. This isn't about you. Mm. This is about people that want to normalize this lifestyle. They want to embrace it and affirm it and celebrate it and think that, you can be okay with God and live this way. And this is what he's warning will happen yeah. to many people in the church world in the last days. Wow. They fall into this apostate mm-hmm. type condition. Wow. Now, if this is insight and revelation Come to on, you, I want you to go in the chat right now yeah. and let me know. Mm-hmm. And if you're watching this at a later time, give me a thumbs up. Yeah. Matter of fact, just tell me some of the stuff that's happening over there 100%. in the chat right yeah. now, Eddie. It says, thank you, Pastor Jay, for Wednesday night and said, amen. We have people just, um, you know, blown away just with the, such a reminder. I need to keep my faith strong, especially during my walk with God. Fire emojis. Praise God. Love the truth here. It's just so good. It's helping us indeed. And so we got a lot of people just engaging here. And, you know, I I, I got to share this, Pastor, because. Um, when I first heard that word apostate, I, I really didn't, I really never even heard it until, you know, yesterday, yeah. but, um, it, it's just so good to, because it's, it's so refreshing to understand and know what it means because once you understand and know what it means, just like those that are online are listening and understanding it now, it, it brings to revelation of what it is. Yes. And now you know good. what to do with it. Now, now yeah. you're able to understand, like recognize it, it. recognize it, yeah. identify it. Now yeah. you're able to pinpoint, wait a minute. Yeah. How many people aren't there that are doing that? That where they're where they're making it okay to be to not be okay. You know what I mean? They're making it okay when they're not okay. It's you know? it's being normalized. It's normalized. There you, you know, go. living a life that is contradicting scripture. Absolutely. The life mm-hmm. that we are taught that a Christian's life should be like. Yeah. Yeah. They they've departed their traitor. They've They've mm. abandoned the truth. Wow. You said a word right there, traitor. Traitor. Yeah. They've mm. they've they've abandoned the truth. Mm-hmm. 
and they've intentionally embraced a lie. Yeah, like you said, so, at one point they were so on fire, yeah. so on point, so down, so down for the cause, but yet have departed from that very thing. And they try to justify yeah. their condition and their sin. Yeah, and that very thing that changed them, yeah. helped them, yeah, and got them to a point in their life. Exactly. Wow. Their heart became hardened toward it because they, they chose sin over obedience to God. Mm, that's heavy. And that's what he's warning yeah. us about right here. Don't Come let on. this happen to you. Yeah. When he describes even Sodom and Gomorrah. Because in Genesis chapter 19, verses 24 and 25, he said, Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire for the Lord mm. out of, from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of those cities and that which grew upon the ground. So he completely destroyed it. And so apostate mm. people know this is in the Bible. Okay. But they intentionally ignore it. Mm, intentionally. Intentionally ignore yep. it. Like I, I know the Bible says I'm not to be like that, mm. but I do it anyway. Come on. And I'm going to do it anyway. Wow. And here's what happens is here's how you become that way. Maybe, maybe you're really on fire for the Lord yep. and you choose your flesh or you choose those desires mm. and you go do it and you indulge in it and you don't really repent from it. Mm. And you begin to get desensitized and the conviction seems to kind of lessen Wow. to the point to where you're no longer convicted by it. At all. And now you begin to try to justify it. Mm. Maybe it starts out by saying, well, you know, I know I shouldn't, but somehow in your mind, you know, oh, it's okay. Or you begin to mm. reason within yourself, well, it's not this or it's not that. Wow. And you begin to think that, well, it's not as bad as that. Mm. Come on, Pastor. So maybe it's not as bad. Mm. And then you reach a point to where you're no longer... Like, it's it's okay. It's okay. Because people actually tell people this kind of stuff is okay. Wow. First Thessalonians chapter 4 That's says, heavy. This is the will of God, even your sanctification, mm. that you should abstain from sexual immorality. Yeah. And anyone who teaches their brother otherwise mm -hmm. is, 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 a, is a fraud, is defrauding him. Mm. And the Bible said, let that person be accursed. Come on. So if I teach you, mm -hmm. hey, Eddie, mm -hmm. God is super cool with you living a homosexual life, mm. a trans life, uh, a, a non-binary life. Yeah. Um, you can go things. live in adultery. Yep. You can go live in a fornic. You can go be a fornicator. Wow. God doesn't care. It's all good. Do, yeah. One night stands, Imagine. go for it. <laughs> God is cool. You're yeah. saved, man. Wow. Yeah. The Bible says, let me be accursed. Mm. A curse will come on me yeah, for, if I tell you that. Wow. That's Here's what Romans chapter 15, verse 4 says. It says, for, what, for whatsoever things were written, were written for our learning, mm -hmm. that through patience and comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. Mm. So all scripture is given to help us to learn. Come on. So when we read those things, it's helping us to not do those things yeah, yeah. so that we don't experience the same outcome as they experience. Yeah. It's like that saying that it's wise to learn from your mistakes, but even wiser to learn from other people's mistakes. Yes. And so the Bible shows us other people's mistakes, so we won't do them. Yes. You know, that's wiser. Yeah, absolutely. You know? <laughs> right, Pastor? Yeah. And, and that is God's grace and love, right? Mm -hmm. Be, yeah. Being expressed like yeah. we don't have to experience certain things to learn those things. Exactly. Like you're saying. Yep. We can read the scriptures and the Holy Spirit will bring it to Come on. alive to us. That's good, Pastor. And the Holy Spirit will use it to be like a light to guide our feet, mm -hmm. to help us to make decisions, to view mm -hmm. life through. Come on. So that as we see it, as it comes at us, it doesn't get in us. That's good, Pastor. Now he goes on to say, let's 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 jump in here a little bit more. Yeah. And uh in verses eight through ten, he says, Likewise also these dreamers defile the flesh. They reject authority. Mm -hmm. And they speak evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael, the archangel in contending with the devil, when he disputed with the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Mm -hmm. And these speak evil of whatever they do not know and whatever they know naturally, like mm -hmm. brute beast, 
in these things, they corrupt themselves. Mm. So he's describing their thought life, their dreams, like, oh, I want to do that. Yeah. And they despise dominion or they despise God's lordship. They yeah. reject Jesus as Lord and they reject his leadership mm. that he places in the body of Christ or in our life. Come on. When when God, when the, when the Bible describes Jesus as being our Lord, yeah. that means he's our master. Mm-hmm means he's our ruler. Now, yeah. he's not this harsh, evil dictator. Yeah. But it means he is the king of our life. Come on. He is the one that that lays out the pathway by where we should walk. That's good, Pastor. He invites us into a journey with him on a path of righteousness. Come on. The Bible describes the walk of the righteous as a narrow path and sometimes difficult is the way, mm. but it leads into righteousness and it leads into an eternal place That's good. with God Almighty. Mm. And so in the scripture yep. right here, he's describing these people that speak evil of leadership, of dignitaries, mm. um, leaders they should have respected rather than showing respect. They, they speak bad about yep. them. Yep. These men ignorantly speak evil is what he's describing right here. Yeah. They're, they're foolish mm-hmm. in their language and in their words and in their mindset. So Michael, the archangel, when he was actually, in this conflict yep. over Moses's body with with the devil, yeah, he didn't even speak evil about. It. He just said, "The Lord rebuke you." Mm. So what does that mean? Okay, you know, we were having a today. Yep. Uh, there were a few of us, you, you know, having lunch yep. together, right? Mm-hmm. And we were talking about David and Saul. Yep. Now, so when it says that Michael didn't speak in a certain way toward the devil here, it's because of the position that Satan had once been in. Once been once in. Once been in. Yep. So Saul had been once anointed by God. Yes, he was. And even in that position, when mm-hmm. David in the natural had every reason by where he should take Saul out, yep. should have killed him. Yep. And he had an opportunity in a cave to kill him, yep. but didn't kill him. Yep. And he wouldn't touch him because he had been God's anointed. Mm. It was the position. Yeah. It was God's anointed at one time. And even though Saul had departed from obedience to God yeah. and had given himself over to demonic evil things and evil spirits mm-hmm. came on him, yeah. David's like, I'm not going to touch him. Mm. I'm going to back away. From, I'm going to let God deal with him. Wow. And God will deal with him as he sees fit. Yep. Yep. And so that's what this is describing here. Mm. It's describing people in the last days in the church yeah. that that will speak evil about positions, mm. pastors. On, yep. Think about this. Yep. People have no problem talking about apostles or prophets or pastors or teachers yep. in the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. They they have no problem talking about those positions yep. and tearing them down. And I realize yep. there are some corruption in some people Mm -hmm. because that's what we're talking about right now. Yeah, 100%. But you have to be very, very careful of what you're saying because it can open up this window Mm. for something to come on you. Absolutely. That's good. Now, this is the part that I really want to get to. Mm -hmm. I want to get to this part right here. Come on. In verse 11, it says, Woe to them. Mm -hmm. Now, it was describing all of those he just described, but it's also in connection with what he's about to say. Yeah. He says, for they have gone. Now he's talking about all those other people. Mm -hmm. It says, for they have gone in the way. So now this is their way. This is their way of thinking. This is their behavior. Mm -hmm. This is the path that they're on. They've gone in the way of Cain and have run greedily in the air of Balaam Mm. for profit and perished in the rebellion of Korah. So he's describing this type of spirit that will get on people and be working in people mm. in the times in which we're presently yeah. living right now. Yep. Now, when they said this, they saw it in the future, even though there were little uh, 
resemblances of it in their day. Mm. But they're talking specifically about no, our day times, right our now. Times. Yep. Our future. Yeah. Our time. Our day. Yeah. Yes. Got it. Wow. And so <clears throat> let's talk about all three of these. Yeah. So he's talking about the way of Cain, Balaam, Balaam. and Korah. Mm, so in go. Genesis chapter four, it is describing what Cain did. It says in verse three, it says in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, God had specifically given them instructions by where he was to be approached. He had actually modeled it for them mm. because blood was required. Blood was a picture of what Christ would do for us in the New Testament. It's a picture of him becoming our sacrifice. Okay. It's a picture of him purchasing us with his blood. Mm -hmm. It's a picture of him washing away all of our sins yeah. through his work. Come on. But Cain wanted to do it his way. Mm. Yeah. That is a picture of a works-based religion. Mm. And there is a lot of people that dictate the terms by where they think God should be happy. Mm, wow. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do it this way. Going against the grain. Going against the grain. Yep. And trying to convince yourself, or maybe you fully believe it. Yeah. Maybe this spirit is on you, and this is the way you believe. Well, I can do it this way. Wow. I can do it the way I want to do it. Stubborn. Cain wanted to do it. It was easy for him because Cain was a farmer. Mm -hmm. He just took what he had, right? It's easy. Yep. Versus I'm going to go out and get what God said that I'm to bring and I'm to allow the sacrifice yeah. I give him to be the thing by where I connect to him or worship him. Yeah, I just got a text yesterday. As you're, Right now, pastors, I'm even looking at you and I'm, and I'm listening to what you're saying. I got a text yesterday and it said, you know, if it's not hard for you to do, then it's not really a sacrifice. It isn't a sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so sometimes mm -hmm. now... There are moments, so my mind is in yeah. two or three different, I see two or three different pathways yeah. based off of what you just said. Yeah. And I'm thinking about mm -hmm. what we're talking about here, because mm -hmm. I really hope this is helping you. Absolutely. I, I know it is. Mm -hmm. I believe the Holy Spirit is speaking yeah. to people. Yeah. You're watching this even at a later time. Mm -hmm. And don't push off this conviction right now. Mm. Embrace this moment. Come on. Because on the other side of what God wants to do in your life, it's restoration, it's peace, yeah. it's joy, yeah, come on. it's intimacy with God, yes, it's it God's is. presence mm. coming into your life, being restored to your life. Yeah. God's going to do a miracle for you. Yeah. But you've got to be willing to put on the brakes, yeah. repent from your sins, mm. and say, God, I'm turning back to you. Come on. And I'm asking you to cleanse and wash me. Now, here's what Abel did. Abel brought an animal. Yeah. That animal sacrifice. Mm -hmm. The blood was shed. Mm -hmm. God was pleased, signifying his pleasure by fire falling. Mm -hmm. Here's what happened with Cain. Cain got angry mm -hmm. because he saw his brother Abel being blessed. He was jealous. Yeah. And in verse 7, mm -hmm. God said, if you do well, Will you not be accepted? But if you don't, sin lies at your door. He's warning him. Mm -hmm. And he's warning us. He said, sin lies at the door and its desire is for you. Now think about this. The Hebrew word for, or the Hebrew words that describe this particular portion of this verse, sin lies at the door mm -hmm. and it waits for you. When you look up those words in the original Hebrew, yeah. It literally says like a wild banshee demon crouching, mm. waiting. It's saying that when you walk in this type of disobedience, it yeah. opens up a door and demons are waiting. Waiting. Come on. Yeah. To jump on you. Yeah. That's what it's describing. Now, mm -hmm. once again, this isn't to put us in fear, no. but it's to help wake us up. Awareness. Because you can't yep. intentionally walk in disobedience to God and think that God's blessing is going to be on you. Come God on, will never 
bless disobedience. God will never pour out his blessing on sin. Mm. You cannot live a habitually sinful life and God bless it. On, you cannot it. push off the truth of God's word and say, oh, I think God will be happy with this. God ought to be happy with this. Mm. And you know you're walking in disobedience to God's word. Come on, Pastor. God's not going to pour his blessing out there. Yeah. You're actually opening up the door for demon activity Ooh. in your life. And that's what he's describing. Yeah, that's heavy. He said, sin lies at the door mm -hmm. and his desire is for you. Mm -hmm. And so the thing that Abel did, so let me back up. So Cain got angry, got jealous. That was the open door that Satan worked through, right? Lies yeah. at the door, yep. looks for an opportunity, mm -hmm. jumped in. It works through Cain. What did it do? It caused, it, it caused Cain. Mm -hmm. Of course, you have to be responsible for your decisions, your actions. Mm -hmm. But Cain killed his brother, yep. Abel, yep. because he became jealous of him. Yes. Abel obeyed God. Mm -hmm. And how did he do it? He did it by faith. Yep. He offered up his sacrifice by faith. Mm -hmm. Cain did not have faith. Yeah. He reasoned his actions. He justified wow. his actions. So if that is you, I want to encourage you. Make yeah. sure that you just stop right now and repent. Mm. God, forgive me. God, cleanse me. I don't Come want to on, be Pastor. like that. I want to walk in obedience to you. I'm going to walk in intimacy with you. Come on, Pastor. So the third thing that mm -hmm. he described is Korah. Now, this is a real predominant spirit yeah. that is active in the church. Now, Korah was a person mm -hmm. over a tribe, yep. and he influenced these whole group of people, and they rebelled against God. They rejected God's leadership. Come on. So when you study that out, and you mm -hmm. can go study this whole thing in numbers, but when you study that out, Korah influenced all of these people to come against Moses come and on. Aaron. Yep. In Numbers chapter 16, verse 3, it says, they gathered themselves together against. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anytime someone is trying to get you to gather against. Yep. Come on. Against your God-appointed leader, mm -hmm. you better pay close attention to what's happening there. Yep. That's why the Bible says you're not to even receive an accusation Come on, Pastor. against a, an elder, mm -hmm. except there be two or three witnesses. Mm. So if somebody comes and says, I think, or I don't like, or this, yeah. it's the same thing in the court of law, right? Yep. You can't just go down and make a, a blind accusation against somebody, yeah. and then the whole court system stop and pull you into the courts and... You stand before a judge. No. There has to be verifiable, tangible evidence 100%. for them to look at it, to even consider it. 100%. That's why the Bible says you're not to even receive an accusation. Yes. Except there are two or three witnesses. Come on. And so what happened was Korah convinced this whole group of people yeah. to rebel against Moses and Aaron. Mm -hmm. And so here's what they said. They said, you take much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Therefore, lift you lift up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. They lifted themselves up because they didn't want to be under authority. They wanted to be the ones that were in authority. And they began to walk in rebellion against that, and God took it personal. Mm. Because they rejected God's appointed leadership in their life. Yep. Now you have to understand God appoints leaders in our life. Yes, he does. Now it's it's voluntary mm -hmm. in the sense it's never forced. Come on. It's never through dictatorship. No. No. Submission is a decision that you make. Mm -hmm. And you live with the consequences of whatever your choices are. Yep. Now, spiritually, God deals with us. Come on. Here's now remember, mm -hmm. this is telling us this will be predominant in the church in the last days. Yes, it is. And it's given to us as, as an example and a warning to not do it. Don't let it get in us because mm -hmm. here's what's going to happen. Happen to them and it's going to happen to those who allow it to get in them and they don't repent from it. Come on. Because here's what happened. God told Moses, first thing, let me back up. First thing God did when they, they came against Moses and Aaron, Moses Scripture says Moses was the most humble man on the earth. Wow. Really? Yes. Mm. Moses fell on his face and went under intercession for them. Mm. He started praying for them. For them, yeah. And then God got so fed up with what they were doing, God told Moses and everybody else, said, get away from them, back up. Mm. 
And when they backed up, God literally caused the earth to open up, yep. swallow them up, <laughs> and close Crazy. back up yeah. everything. Mm. Them, their belongings, everything, it disappeared. Wow. God says, I'm wiping you off the planet. That's it. Your yep. seed, your lineage mm -hmm. will be no longer. Wow. Because of what God, their rebellion. They rebelled, yep. they rebelled against God yep. and they rebelled against his leadership. Wow. This is a warning of what will happen to people. Come on, now, Pastor. I want to encourage you. Once again, mm -hmm. I, if you're just, if you came in at a later point mm -hmm. in watching this or if you didn't start watching this from the very beginning, mm -hmm. this isn't given to like frighten us. And of course, there does need to be a, a reverence and a fear yeah. For the Lord, not yeah. fear in the sense of he's this cruel, evil God, but mm -hmm. fear and awe and respect. Yeah. So I heard one of my friends uh, talking the other day on his podcast, mm -hmm. Sean Smith and his wife, they, they were describing what they feel is missing in the body of Christ. Mm. Come on. And they were saying that people believe in God. Yeah. And everything we've talked about tonight yeah. are about people that believe in God. Yeah. But they have lost the awe. The awe of God is gone. That fear, that holy respect, that mm. honor. Come on. That's God, is treat, yep. God is treated flippantly. Mm -hmm. We have lowered who God is in our eyes. Wow. Many people have. Mm -hmm. And you gotta, you got to rightfully see God in His rightful place if your perception of him has diminished or the awe, the respect of God has somewhat dwindled. Come on, that's so good, Pastor. You did not change God. Mm -hmm. You changed the way you see God. Your lens. Wow. And it's affecting the condition of your soul mm. and your mindset. And therefore, the warning is that you're subject to deception and you could end up in this state of being apostate. Come on, Pastor. That's heavy. Yep. This condition. That's good. So this is the warning for us. Mm. You need to stir yourself up. You need to ask God, help you to return to that place of awe and respect and fearful honor mm -hmm. as a holy God, mm. your heavenly Father yeah. that loves you but is sinless. Mm, come on. And he's inviting you and calling you higher. Ask him to restore that to you. Yeah. Repent of your sins. Mm. I want to encourage you to do that. Now, we're going to pray for people in just a moment, yes. but also we're going to do a Q and A. Yes. And you can go ahead and begin to just, if you've not yet uh, put in some of your questions, do that right now. Yep. And before we go into this prayer time, and I hope this is helping you, and if it is, once again, just let me know that in the chat or in the comment section if you're watching this at a later time. Just yes. put those in there right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before we jump in this, I want to I wanna share with you also about giving. Now, mm -hmm. one of the things that we did, did we talk about Balaam? Did I leave that out? You left that out, Pastor. Okay. Yes. I want to talk prophet? about yeah. Balaam real quick. I'm going to back up. Yep. So Balaam was one of the people that he warned. Now, Balaam had a little bit of fear of God in him. Yep. But when the king offered him mm -hmm. money and honor, fortune mm. and honor. Come on. If he would go and prophesy destruction over Israel, mm. he took it. Wow. And it's a warning of, to Christians. Mm -hmm that will compromise their faith mm -hmm. to get what they want in the flesh. Yeah. Whether it's money, mm -hmm. whether it's material things. Come on. If there is a price that the enemy can dangle in front of you yeah. to get you to sell out the integrity of what God desires, mm -hmm. then you got to be real <coughs> careful because it can lead you into a place of destruction. So that's what that's about. Now, yeah. as soon as I, because I'm about to jump in here and talk about money, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It really has to do with motive. Come on, Pastor. That's good. Now, I want to invite people mm. to, to give tonight and to yeah. sow into this. Now, here's the reason. 
I'm giving you this opportunity. Because your giving doesn't necessarily benefit anyone here on staff in the sense that it gives them money. Mm -hmm. But it does empower us to get the necessary equipment. Come on. We are we are currently in the process of, and I say this every time, right? We're building out the studio. Not this particular Saturday, but next Saturday, the 14th, we're literally going to begin the process of demoing and literally gutting out all the way to the studs. We're taking the, mm -hmm. we're taking the sheetrock out. We're taking the flooring up. We're taking the ceiling out. We're completely gutting that space so that they can go back in and begin to lay the uh, cabling and run elect electrical to where it needs to be so that we can begin to build out that space to turn it into the production space and studio that's going to be. And that's where ultimately this podcast will be done from. Mm -hmm. We'll be in that space. Hallelujah. So your giving is going to empower us to be able to do that. Now, by faith, we're just stepping out. And we're going for it. To do yeah. everything that's needed is going to be $200,000. Yeah. Now, we're almost to $55,000. Mm -hmm. I don't have the actual figure right here. I'll share that. Uh, tomorrow night, and yep. I will share it Sunday. Yeah. Now, I need people to jump in there big time mm -hmm. and give significant amounts. And some people have. We've had people that have been very generous. Yep, absolutely. And I want to say thank you. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell every one of you that give, whatever it is, large or small. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it may seem like numerically a small number, but it's a sacrifice. Come on. And you're like, you're feeling it. It's like, I'm going to give this. And I really need it, but I'm going to give it. I want you to know that nothing goes unnoticed before the Lord. And I want to say thank you for believing in this ministry. Thank you for supporting it. Thank you for empowering us to do what we're doing. Yep. The giving link's right there at the top. So I want to encourage you, uh, just click on that link. Or if you have a second device, you can text. All the information's right there. For those of you that are watching this at a later time, all the giving information is in the um, information section underneath the video and make sure you designate this to heart for the house, especially those of you that give large amounts. That way we can keep moving this needle as it relates to giving. Mm -hmm. Now <clears throat> we're going to jump in here in the QA Q and a part of this night. Tell me some of the questions that you see coming in, Eddie. How do you, a uh, question, how do you deal with, with, What's the best way to deal with people that have apostate spirit or and or uh, this type of condition in a church? Well, number one, mm -hmm. you always want to share and plant truth in people's life, right? Mm -hmm. The word of God's like a seed. You want to lovingly reason with them. The scripture says that that if we can win somebody from the error of their way, we've we've won somebody back to the Lord. <clears throat> so that number one it should be your first approach. But then number two, if they don't respond to that, mm -hmm. you don't attack them. But just like we read in second Timothy chapter three, it says, don't have anything to do with them. Mm. Okay. So you're to, you're to step away from those people. Mm -hmm. Just like we described David and Saul earlier. Yep. David said, I'm just going to back away from Saul. Mm hmm. I'm not going to kill him. Yep. I'm going to leave him in God's hands. Leave him in God's hands. Yes. And so that is what you should do. Okay. Yeah. If you see some of these characteristics in oneself, what's how's the best way to deal with it? If you see it in, in, in yourself, the best way to deal with it, if you see any of the things that we talked about, because you don't have to have all these things yeah, no, for no, that no. stuff to be working in your mm -hmm. life. If you see any of these things working in your life, you need to humble yourself before God. Come on. You need to repent of it. Yep. And you need to ask God to cleanse you, to forgive you. And you need to renew your mind in these truths mm -hmm. so that you create that standard that you protect yourself from it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, one of the things the scripture tells us to do, if you, go to, if you continue to read in Down Father in Jude, here's one of the things it tells us to do to, to protect ourselves mm -hmm. from this happening. Okay. It says that we're to build ourselves up in our most precious faith. How do you build yourself up? Mm -hmm. Two ways. Number one, you build yourself up in God's word. Come on. 
excuse me, <clears throat> you build yourself up in God's word. Yeah. And so as you build yourself up in God's word, it will protect you from this happening to you. You got to fall in love with God's word. Come on. And you don't have to try to read the whole Bible in, in a month or two. <laughs> yeah. Just jump in there and systematically begin to study scripture. Come on, Pastor. That's good. Yep. <clears throat> and meditate on it throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Scripture encourages us to meditate in his word. Yeah. Because when we meditate in his word, uh, it, it gives, it empowers us yeah. in how to make the right decisions and the directions we should go in life. Amen. Second thing it tells us to do in mm -hmm. building ourselves up, mm -hmm. it says building yourselves up, praying mm -hmm. in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, come on. So praying in tongues yep. literally builds you up. That's good. Praying in the Spirit builds mm -hmm. you up. Now, you told me the other day yeah. that you and some other guys just got together and y'all started praying and y'all were encouraging each oh, other. Fire. And then as y'all just started seeking the Lord mm -hmm. in prayer, mm -hmm. y'all prayed in the Spirit yeah. for like an hour. Yeah, it was a long time. And you can pray in the Spirit Absolutely. when you're going about your day. Yeah, There are times I, I, I can be out in public somewhere mm -hmm. and I'm just praying underneath my breath in the spirit. Absolutely. 100%. It does something. Pastor. It does something. Yep. Uh, when I'm walking through this building at times, mm -hmm. I just start praying in the spirit. Absolutely. <laughs> when I'm at home, you yeah. can, my family would tell you this, that I pray in the spirit quite frequently mm -hmm. for no reason. Yeah. I, they're just out of nowhere. I just, there he is. I mean, he's over there praying in the spirit again. <laughs> Yeah. I do that. It's a normal part of my life. Absolutely. 100%. And then I do it when I go into the secret place, into my prayer closet. Mm -hmm. I pray in the spirit. I pray with the understanding and I pray with the spirit, just like the apostle Paul encouraged us, in, encourages us to do. Absolutely. 100%. So those things That's will good. protect you mm. from that. Come on, Pastor. Now, I appreciate all your questions and that mm -hmm. you put in there. Give me, give, yeah. Tell me what's happening over there. Uh, it says, Pastor Jay, how can I know for sure if a financial opportunity <clears throat> will go against or be blessed by the Lord? Well, number one, if, and that's a good question because not every good opportunity is always a God opportunity. Mm. Sometimes good will lead you out of what God has for you. Mm. But that doesn't mean that every good thing isn't from God. Come on. How do you know that? Yep. Now, some things are obvious, right? Yeah. Some things are immoral, un unethical, yeah. or, you know, there's gray area. Mm -hmm. It's going to hurt people. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. Opportunists that take advantage of other people's uh, ignorance. Mm -hmm. Those kind of things, you don't have to pray about that. Yeah. That's obvious. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Selling people things they don't need. Stuff like that, right? Yep, yep. Overcharging people because you realize you can take advantage of somebody. Okay. Those things are the obvious. Absolutely. Now, when you pray about a situation, mm -hmm. so it's not everything's bad, right? Yeah. It could be like, should I take this job or take that job? Yeah. You have to sit before the Lord mm -hmm. and you pray about God, direct me. Come on. Scripture says when you lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all of his ways, he will direct your footsteps. That's good, Pastor. Now, the Holy Spirit will give you this inner intuition. Mm-hmm. It's the Holy Spirit's leading. Come on. Now, here's what I'd encourage people to do. When you sit before the Lord and you've prayed, God, which direction do I go? And you sit quietly before the Lord, you think each direction through. Mm -hmm. Which one gives you peace in your heart? Mm, that's good, Pastor. Yep. And the one that gives you peace yep. is most likely the one that comes from God. Come on. That's good right there. Yeah. That's a good answer. So I want to make sure that we yep. jump in here with everything you got and um, just give me any other things that are coming at me, uh, Eddie. And uh, Everybody's just excited. Everybody's just blessed by tonight's um, uh, message and, and people are saying beautiful, so good. And uh, I, love, I love how everybody's just interacting with one another and just encouraging each other and even praying for one another. And uh, everybody's just a fire emoji. This is so good. And they're picking up where you're putting down, Pastor. Good. Yeah. That, that, you know, this, we put a lot of effort yeah, into this. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And thank mm -hmm. you for being a part of this. We yeah, care about you. We love you. Yes. And I want to pray for you. Come on. I want to pray that none of this stuff, the spirit that's behind this yeah. stuff, would even be able to grab a hold of you in any way whatsoever. Mm -hmm. 
even those of you that are watching this at a later time, yeah. this prayer is for you. Mm. Because I believe I can pray right now and you can watch this at a later time. Yeah. And if you open up your heart to this moment, I believe God will honor this prayer and minister to you. Come on, Pastor. And those of you that are with us right now, and there's a significant number of you that are here mm-hmm. tonight, and I'm so glad that you've joined us. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, now I want you to join in. If you're yes. where you can just stop for a minute and you can just lean into this moment and just turn your heart near toward the Lord. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I Jesus. pray for yes, everyone Lord. that yes, is God. with us. Yes, God. Lord, I, I plead your blood over them. I plead the blood of Christ mm-hmm. over their hearts, over their minds, over their lives. Yes, God. Lord, our desire is to have a clean heart and a right spirit. Yes, Lord. To live in a way that pleases and honors you, God. Yes, God. Lord, I'm asking that you would shield and protect us from any of these things. Yes, in Jesus' name. Any of these spirits that like God on Cain or Balaam or Korah. Yes, God. Lord, don't let that touch any of my friends yes, and Lord. our family members yes, that are Lord, with Jesus us right name. now, God. Father, I pray that you keep us underneath the shadows of your wings. Yes, God. Keep us in a place of safety and refuge. Continue to minister your truth to Mm. us, God. Keep your hand upon our life, God. Convict us of anything that would try to pull us off in error or false doctrine or going into an unhealthy place, God, spiritually. Yes, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, I just pray that for everybody, everybody that's with us, everybody that's watching this, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you receive that prayer, go in the chat right yeah. now and just let me know that uh, you're receiving this. One more question, Pastor. Yeah. What if someone keeps trying to hang out and they're doing this stuff? How do you lovingly make a boundary without hurting them? Well, sometimes that's not possible. Mm. Sometimes you have to step into the uncomfortable. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, the Bible says if someone is in sexual sin yeah. and they refuse to repent, this is in 1 Corinthians, mm-hmm. it says if a person is living in sexual sin and refuses to repent, mm-hmm. so this isn't talking about somebody trying to get it right yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. falling because Habitual, of yep. weakness yeah. or something like that. It's like, no, I'm not repenting. Mm-hmm. I don't want to quit. What What the scripture says is that you're not to even eat with such a person. Wow. And... Obeying God isn't always easy. Mm. Yeah. And sometimes you just have to lovingly say, look, I'm not condemning you. I'm not against you. Mm-hmm. But you're living in a way that that goes against what God's word says. Mm. That's good, Pastor. And out of respect and honor for myself, mm-hmm. here I'm not I'm not gonna we're not gonna hang out anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I hope to see you at church. Hope you keep coming, you know, yeah. like Keep going after the Lord, but Mm -hmm. we're not hanging out any longer. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Awesome. Great answer. Yeah. So, so glad uh, you, everyone was with us tonight. Love you guys. Uh, guys. Once again, I want to remind you, we go live tomorrow Mm -hmm. night at 7 p.m. Pacific time. That's right here in California. Mm -hmm. Um, Then again, Sunday morning, 11 a.m. Pacific standard time. Please join us. If you ever need anything, don't hesitate to reach out to us yes. right here at the Sanctuary Headquarters. We love you guys. We love you guys. See you next time. Have a good one. God bless you guys.